So if you're looking into getting a new Bluetooth speaker, JBL is a very popular brand to choose from because they have a lot of speakers in their lineup for people with different budgets or different needs. So today we're going to be breaking down JBL's current portable Bluetooth speaker lineup, which consists of their Clip 3, the Flip 5, the JBL Charge 4, the Pulse 4, the Extreme 2, and the brand new Boombox 2. So let's see which one's right for you. So as always, there's price. Now, first off, I do want to point out that JBL speakers have increased in price over the last few months. The Clip 3 is the smallest and cheapest speaker here, retailing for $70. Then there's the Flip 5, which retails for $120. The Charge 4 retails for $180. The Pulse 4 retails for $250. The Extreme 2 retails for $350. And the JBL Boombox 2 retails for $500. So if you want to pick any of these speakers up, they'll be linked down below. And also keep in mind, JBL constantly puts these speakers on quote unquote sale. So definitely be on the lookout for that. Now, something that all of these speakers have in common is that they're all meant to be ultra portable and ultra durable. All of these speakers have an IPX7 rating, which means they're all waterproof and almost all of them have a fabric covered body so they can stand up to constant bumps and scrapes whenever you're lugging any of these speakers around. So if you're looking for a speaker to use at home and also take it on a camping trip or something, any of these speakers are going to be perfectly fine. Except for the Pulse 4. The Pulse 4 is a great at-home speaker, but it's not the greatest in the outdoors for a few reasons. First off, from my experience, even though JBL claims that this speaker is waterproof, I wouldn't chance it because my first Pulse 4 actually died the first time it touched water. Also, the speaker has an acrylic body, so you could scratch or crack it if you're too rough in it. And also, the battery life on the Pulse 4 isn't the greatest because it has a built-in light feature to power. Now, the light feature on the Pulse 4 looks awesome, and you have a few modes to choose from, but this light feature looks best either indoors or in the dark. In direct sunlight, you're not going to see a thing. But the biggest reason why the Pulse 4 is better suited for the indoors and not so much the outdoors is because it's an upwards firing speaker. So the speaker is going to sound best if you have it indoors where its sound can bounce off the ceiling and walls. But now let's talk about tech specs. Bluetooth wise, all of these speakers perform basically the same. They all have a stable Bluetooth connection and they can be connected to two devices at the same time. So you and a friend can both be DJ, but they're all strictly using SBC and they all do have a slight latency whenever you try to watch videos on your phone. Except for the Clip 3. The Clip 3 actually doesn't have any latency to it whenever you try to watch movies or videos on your phone. But the Clip 3 can only be connected to one device at a time. Now, the next thing I do want to address here are ports because only the Clip 3, the Charge 4, the Extreme 2, and the Boombox 2 still have an audio jack, whereas the Flip 5 and Pulse 4 don't. Now, even though the Pulse 4, the Charge 4, and the Flip 5 all have USB-C ports, which is great if you're an Android user, their USB-C ports are strictly used for charging the speaker. You can't use these USB-C ports as a wired connection with your phone, and you also can't use this USB-C port to charge your own devices. But if you do want to be able to use your speaker as a battery bank for your phone, then the Charge 4, the Extreme 2, and the Boombox 2 all have a USB-A out port so that you can charge your own devices. But finally, to wrap this whole ports thing up, just keep in mind that the Extreme 2 and the Boombox 2 both charge via an AC port, which is going to be very important in a little bit, and the Clip 3 still charges via a micro USB port. Now, when it comes to battery life, if you're looking for the speakers here with the best stamina, then I would recommend the Charge 4 and the Extreme 2, because I found that the Charge 4 has a real-world battery life of around 11 hours of playback time with its volume set to 80%, and the Extreme 2 is good for around 9 hours of playback time. Whereas all of the other speakers here, like the Boombox 2, Pulse 4, Flip 5, and Clip 3, are all good for around 7 hours of playback time or a little less with their volumes set at 80%. 
Nonetheless, all of the speakers here are going to have no problem keeping up with you for a full day of high volume listening. But if you do need something with better stamina, then I would recommend the Charge 4 or the Extreme 2, because these two speakers do outperform the rest. But now let's talk about actually listening to music with these speakers. Obviously, the larger the speaker, the louder it's going to get, and for the most part, that applies here. The Clip 3 has a single transducer and a single pass radiator, and it's rated at 3.3 watts. Now, the Flip 5 also has a single transducer, but it has dual passive radiators shooting out its sides, and it's rated at 20 watts. Now, the Charge 4 is basically a larger and louder version of the Flip 5. It also has a single transducer and dual passive radiators shooting out its sides, but it's rated at 30 watts. But then, there's the Pulse 4. Given that it's a $250 speaker, you would assume that it would get at least as loud as the Charge 4 and be rated at 30 watts. But actually, the Pulse 4 performs more similarly to the Flip 5 because it's a 20 watt speaker. Now, when it comes to setups, the Pulse 4 has a single upward firing transducer and it has a single downward firing passive radiator. So, with the Pulse 4, you're getting Flip 5 sound performance and you're mainly paying for its light feature. But now, we've come to the big boys which have more serious speaker setups. Both the Extreme 2 and Boombox 2 have dual woofers, dual tweeters, and those signature exposed passive radiators shooting out the sides. Now, when it comes to power ratings, remember how I mentioned earlier that both of these speakers charge via an AC port? Well, when you use these speakers while they're plugged in, you will actually get a little bit more performance out of them in the way of a loudness and more bass. Whereas that's not the case with these other speakers here that charge via a USB port. The Extreme 2 is rated at 20 watts when it's playing off of its internal battery and 40 watts when it's plugged in. While the Boombox 2 is rated at 60 watts when it's playing off of its internal battery and 80 watts when it's plugged in. But now, we're going to be jumping into a sound test, but for this sound test, we're going to be doing things a little differently. We're going to be comparing all of these speakers playing at their max volume, because I feel that's what most people are interested in.
So obviously, for the most part, the larger the speaker here, the louder it's going to get and the more bass it's going to have. But from a sound signature standpoint, all of these speakers like to put a slight emphasis on the mids so that vocals are pronounced and the bass comes in when it has to. For the most part, JBL stock sound signature on all of their speakers should play nice with most music genres out there. But unfortunately, none of JBL speakers have an adjustable EQ. So if you want something with a neutral sound signature or something with a warmer sound signature, you're gonna have to look elsewhere. And personally, I think it's time JBL added an adjustable EQ to their speakers, because like I've said in past video, I think the Boombox 2 sounds way too bright at higher volumes. But that's not the case with all of these other speakers here. Now, like I mentioned earlier, the larger the speaker, the louder and more bass is gonna have. But like I also mentioned earlier, even though the Pulse 4 is more expensive than the Charge 4 and is larger, sound quality wise, the Pulse 4 performs like a Flip 5. So if you're looking for a mid-size speaker and you're really concerned about sound quality, then you're better off with the Charge 4. Now, another reason why JBL is such a popular brand is because of their speaker pairing protocol. You literally just press one button on each speaker and they'll pair themselves together. You don't gotta open up any other apps and it just works. But right now in mid-2020, there is a bit of fragmentation going on. JBL's newer speakers here, like the Boombox 2, Flip 5, and Pulse 4 are all using Party Boost, and future JBL speakers that are going to be released are also going to be using Party Boost. Whereas JBL's older speakers here, like the Extreme 2 and Charge 4, are both using JBL Connect Plus. So it's very important to keep in mind that you cannot pair a Party Boost speaker to a JBL Connect Plus speaker. Now, I know that this sucks and does look and feel like planned obsolescence, but I have found that Party Boost performs a little better than JBL Connect Plus, specifically because you get much better range in between speakers. But ultimately, just keep in mind that the Extreme 2 and Charge 4 are kind of technically less gen. But also keep in mind that the Clip 3 cannot be paired to a Party Boost speaker or to a JBL Connect Plus speaker. But finally, this now leads us to speculation territory. Now, JBL has been slowly refreshing all of their speakers. First, they released their Charge 4, then they released their Flip 5, which was their first Party Boost speaker, then they released their Pulse 4, and as of most recently, as of recording this video, they released their Boombox 2. Now, it's safe to assume that the next pair of speakers that are going to get refreshed here are going to be the Extreme 2 and the Clip 3. And I think that we'll see the Extreme 3 and the Clip 4 at IFA 2020, which is supposed to take place in September. But ultimately, here's my breakdown of JBL's speaker lineup. I think the Clip 3 is a great little podcast machine because it's tiny and if you want to take it on the go with you, you can just clip it on you. The Pulse 4 is a great at-home or dorm room speaker because it has that awesome light feature. But remember, if you want to get the best sound out of it, you should use it indoors so that its upward firing transducer has something to bounce off of. And this speaker does live on the charger. But if you are concerned about sound quality, then you are better off with the Charge 4 because it sounds noticeably better than the Pulse 4. And also, the Charge 4 has a lot more stamina, so if you're looking for a long-lasting speaker for camping, then the Charge 4 is a great option. But if you do want to save yourself some money, you can always go with the Flip 5. Now, if you're looking into getting a large speaker for constantly taking on the go with you, then personally, I do recommend the Extreme 2 over the Boombox 2, because it's significantly easier to travel with, and it does get more than loud enough. But more importantly, it does have better stamina than the Boombox 2. The only thing to keep in mind about the Extreme 2 is that it could possibly get refreshed in a couple of months. But due to our global health situation, maybe it won't. But definitely, you won't be able to pair it up to newer JBL speakers using Party Boost, and that also goes for the Charge 4. But if you are looking for the loudest speaker here with the most amount of bass, then obviously you'll be better off with the Boombox 2 if you're willing to pay for it. 
If you made it this far, I guess you enjoyed the video. So hit that like button and get subscribed. It helps out more than you realize. If you want to pick any other products up mentioned in this video, those will be linked in the description down below. And you can also support the channel by checking out the merch store. But other than that, I'll catch you next time.